Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here up in Maine at the James D. Julia Auction House, taking a look at some of the machine guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 Firearms Auction. And what we have today is a grease gun. This is an M3A1, the later, slightly improved iteration of the grease gun. It does not have a charging handle on the side, as the original ones did. Instead, it has a thumb hole in the bolt for you to cock it like that. So definitely a simplification. This whole gun just screams simplification. The whole frame grip assembly is a single piece of stamped sheet metal rolled in half and welded together, wireframe stock. This was an extremely inexpensive, downright cheap machine gun uh, for the U.S. to manufacture. And that's what they were looking for when they wanted to replace the Thompson. The Thompson was too heavy, fired too fast, it was too expensive, especially too expensive. And from almost the moment that the U.S. military started buying them in any quantities, they started looking for replacements. And the grease gun is ultimately what they ended up with. Now, the M3 and M3A1 saw some service in World War II, of course, uh, but then also quite a bit of service in later conflicts. They were used extensively in Korea and in the Vietnam War. And they have a reputation for being extremely controllable and excellent firearms, despite the fact that they look like basically like a Sten gun. They look like someone hammered together an assortment of God knows what into some sort of plumbing assembly that fired bullets. Well, well let's give this one a try. 30 round uh, magazines were standard. That was in fact the only magazine for these. 45 ACP, and this is, like so many other submachine gun magazines of the period, basically an extension of the original MP28 magazine that would see service in the MP40, in the Sten gun, and in the grease gun. So it is a double stack, single feed magazine. They are a little difficult to load, but not as bad as I was expecting. There is actually a little tab here on the stock, which serves as a magazine loading tool, should you need it. We'll go ahead and charge the bolt, insert the mag. This has an extremely low rate of fire. just chugs along at about 450 rounds per minute. The safety mechanism on the grease gun is really quite simple. It's the dust cover. When the dust cover is closed, there's a little tab that prevents the bolt from going forward. When you open it, there is no engagement. That tab is right here. As long as the dust cover's open and the bolt's back, you're ready to fire. There's no other manual safety anywhere on the gun. with this. One of the few issues with this is that the sights are actually, to me, rather difficult to work with. It has an aperture in the back, but this front post is really actually pretty close to this hinge pin. The front post is a little bit low and not in the least bit square or crisp. And it's, it's a little actually difficult. Now you'd get used to it with a little bit of shooting, figure, just remembering exactly what the front sight looks like so that you can easily acquire it. But at first, when you pick up the gun, that's a little bit, a uh, little bit more difficult than I had anticipated. There's also a bit of an issue of controllability. When you're actually shooting, and the magazine falls out of your pocket, when you're actually shooting, um, the gun is very easy to control. It just kind of chugs along, and you can keep the sights on target. In fact. In the high-speed footage, you can actually watch the sights come back down onto the target in between shots, which is pretty cool. However, for the first shot, at least for me, and maybe I just haven't practiced enough with it, but there's a lot of mass of this bolt going forward, and I'm tending to get my sights pushing down on my first shot. Um, and then, then the gun kind of jumps back a bit, and after I've got two or maybe three rounds downrange, then the sights kind of stabilize for me and it's easy to control. 
that's another thing I wasn't really anticipating. That's all of my ammo for today. If you guys are interested in adding a very collectible and actually remarkably more difficult to find than you might expect M3A1 grease gun to your own collection, take a look at the link in the description text below. That'll take you to the James Julia catalog page where you can take a look at their estimated prices, their pictures, their description, and everything else you would need to know about this gun to place a bid on it right through their website. Thanks for watching.